at a lung pathology slide with uh, my personal pathology co-pilot here. So it looks like I'm looking at a lung resection. Um, this is likely from either a wedge resection or a lobectomy. I'm just checking the gross description. It looks like it's from a lobectomy specimen here. Okay, it looks like it's a lung adrenal carcinoma, and I'm seeing some various histologic patterns. Um, some of these I'm worried actually are high grade. Um, do you think you could remind me of the, the high grade patterns in lung adrenal carcinoma and describe them to me? Thanks. In lung adenocarcinoma, the high-grade patterns you're likely to encounter include one, micropapillary pattern, okay, characterized by small tufted clusters of cells yep. without Cluster fibrovascular cells. cores, no floating in cores. alveolar spaces. This yep, pattern is often associated with a higher risk of metastasis and poorer prognosis. Okay. Two, solid pattern. This yep, shows solid, solid nests or sheets of tumor cells with sheets, abundant cytoplasm yep. and prominent nucleoli. Yep, it I may have nuclei. use in production but less than what is seen in mucinous adenocarcinoma. Oh, some mucinous here too. A solid pattern is also linked with a worse prognosis. Okay. Three, complex glandular patterns. These include cribriform and fused glands, where the tumor cells form irregular complex glandular structures. They're indicative of um, hey, aggressive glands. behavior. Remember, lung adenocarcinoma can exhibit a mix of different patterns, and the presence of these high-grade features can influence prognosis and treatment decisions. Keep in mind, this is a brief overview. Each pattern has more detailed characteristics under the microscope. Great, thanks so much. Um, so I'm just looking at the slide here and I think there's a just over 20%, let's say 25% of a mixture of high grade patterns that include micropapillary as well as solid types and maybe a bit of a fused glandular pattern. However, the predominant pattern is an acinar uh, component, a subset of which has mucinous cells. I'm also seeing some cells extending into the surrounding air spaces. Can you describe me what that phenomenon is called? The phenomenon you're observing where tumor cells extend into the surrounding air spaces is known as spread through air spaces. Uh, Stas. It's a relatively recently characterized pattern of invasion in lung adenocarcinoma. That's great, thanks. Um, so, and, and I'm also seeing that there's some... Uh, um, Stas is identified by the presence... That's great. So I'm also seeing some areas where it looks like there's tumor in lymphovascular spaces here. Um, so I'm, <clears throat> I'm seeing that there um, as well. Um, could you um, put all this together into a microscopic description just to give you a little bit de more details on what the cells look like? The cells are ra range from cuboidal to columnar and have atypical pleomorphic nuclei with focally prominent nucleoli and there's some interspersed mitotic figures present. I don't see any definite squamous differentiation. Um, so, and then I'm looking at the gross description here. It looks like the tumor is actually 1.5 centimeters in greatest dimension, um, but it's actually involving the visceral pleura here. Um, so can you put this all together into a pathology report that includes a microscopic description as well as uh, calculates the T stage? Um, for the N stage, I've previously looked at some lymph nodes from um, position uh, 12R and 11R as well as some of the mediastinal lymph nodes um, and, and they are all negative for malignancy. So could you put that all together for me? Thanks. Solid, solid, lots of stas in this case. Certainly, here's how the pathology report could be structured, so incorporating your observations. Pathology report, lung adenocarcinoma, gross description, specimen type, lung lobectomy, tumor size, 1.5 centimeters in greatest dimension, tumor location, involvement of the visceral pleura, microscopic description, tumor composition, Predominantly lipidic growth pattern with a subset of mucinous cells. Approximately 25% of the tumor demonstrates high-grade patterns, including micropapillary, solid, and fused glandular patterns. Cell description. Tumor cells range from cuboidal to columnar with a typically pleomorphic nuclei and focally prominent nucleoli. Interspersed mitotic figures are present. No definite evidence of squamous differentiation. Additional findings spread through air spaces is noted presence of tumor in lymphovascular spaces observed. Lymph node examination. This is all really good. Um, could you actually make a version of it that doesn't have the bulleted points um, and just as a paragraph description? Because that's uh, what I prefer for this, thanks. Of 
course, I can format it into a paragraph style. Here's the revised pathology report. Pathology report, lung adenocarcinoma. The specimen is from a lung lobectomy with the tumor measuring 1.5 centimeters in greatest dimension and involving the visceral pleura. About 25% of the tumor shows high grade patterns, including micropapillary. That's great. Just the last thing here. Can you separate an element into the diagnostic line that is in bulleted form that gives the relevant um, 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 things for the reader? Absolutely. I'll add a diagnostic line in bulleted form to summarize the key findings. Pathology report, lung adenocarcinoma. The specimen is from a lung lobectomy with the tumor measuring 1.5 centimeters in greatest dimension and involving the visceral pleura. Microscopically, the tumor predominantly exhibits a lipidic growth pattern with a subset of mucinous cells. About 25% of the tumor shows high grade patterns, including micropapillary, solid and fused glandular patterns. The tumor cells are cuboidal to columnar, displaying atypically pleomorphic nuclei with focally prominent nucleoli and interspersed mitotic figures. No definite squamous differentiation is evident. Notably, spread through air spaces, stas, and presence of tumor in lymphovascular spaces are observed. Lymph node examination. This all sounds good. Um, the case is on for tumor board tomorrow. Could you create a, a two-line summary to highlight some of the relevant details from this pathology report that the uh, tumor board may be interested in? Sure, here's a concise two-line summary for the tumor board. Lung adenocarcinoma, okay. 1.5 centimeters, involving visceral pleura with high-grade patterns, micropapillary, solid, fused glandular, stas, and lymphovascular invasion, staged at least IB, T2A, N0. Lymph nodes from positions 12R, 11R, and mediastinal are negative for malignancy. This summary emphasizes the key pathological features and staging relevant for the tumor board discussion. Great, thanks so much. Um, what uh, molecular testing should I be doing in, uh, in these cases? For lung adenocarcinoma, molecular testing is crucial for guiding targeted therapy and prognosis. Common tests include one EGFR mutation analysis, identifies mutations in the EGFR gene, which can be targeted by specific tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Two, elk gene rearrangement testing detects real... That's great. I think um, I'll be doing uh, the EGFR elk Ross and uh, pd one staining as well as an NGS panel that has a few more genes on it. Um, so I'm actually looking, this was actually done on the biopsy and, and actually uh, showed that uh, there was a EGFR a mutation L858R that was present and the pd one was actually negative. Um, could you actually summarize this all together along with the diagnosis? Because um, I understand that the patient would like to better understand their pathology report. I understand that the uh, patient has about a grade uh, 10 education um, and English is not their first language. Um, could you put that together for me? Thanks. Certainly, I'll provide a simplified summary of the pathology report, including the molecular test results, tailored for a patient with a basic educational background and limited English proficiency. Great. Simplified pathology report for lung cancer. You have a type of lung cancer called lung adenocarcinoma. The, the cancer was found in a part of your lung and was about 1.5 centimeters big. It had spread a little into the lining of your lung and into some tiny blood vessels. We didn't find cancer in the lymph nodes we checked. We did some special tests on the cancer. EGFR test found a change mutation in the cancer cells called L858R. This is important because there are medicines that work well for this type of change. PDL1 test. This test was negative. It helps us understand if certain immune therapies will work, but in your case, it didn't show the markers we look for. Your cancer... This is all actually quite great. Um, just the last thing is um, I'm doing uh, some teaching sessions for some of the residents in our program here. And I think this case has been pretty instructive. Um, I'd like to use this slide as a way to actually help uh, test their knowledge in uh, lung adenocarcinomas. Could you come up with some multiple choice questions that I could ask them after they reviewed the slide? Thanks.
Here are some questions you could use. One, which high-grade histologic pattern is not typically associated with lung adenocarcinoma? Solid C, fused glandular D spindle cell 2. The finding of tumor cells in lymphovascular spaces in lung adenocarcinoma is indicative of A, standard chemotherapy B, tyrosine kinase inhibitors C, radiation therapy D, hormonal therapy. Four, what does a negative PDL1 test result in lung adenocarcinoma generally suggest about immunotherapy? A, highly effective B, not typically effective C, mandatory treatment approach D, only effective in combination with radiation. In a lung adenocarcinoma case with tumor size of 1.5 centimeters and involvement of visceral... Yeah, these questions are okay, but they're actually, I'd like some questions that are more focused for pathology residents. Um, can you focus the questions just around um, pathology and based on uh, the things that we've discussed today? Of course, I can tailor the questions more specifically towards pathology residents, focusing on the aspects we've discussed. Here are the revised questions. One, in lung adenocarcinoma, which histologic pattern is characterized by small, tufted clusters of cells without fibrovascular cores? A, lipidic, B, micropapillary, C, solid, D, fused glandular. Two, the presence of tumor cells extending into surrounding air spaces beyond the main tumor mass in lung adenocarcinoma is known as A, vascular invasion. B, A, prominent nucleoli B, fused glandular pattern. C, squamous differentiation. D, micropapillary pattern. For in the context of lung adenocarcinoma, which molecular test would be most relevant when an EGFR L858R mutation is detected? A, elk rearrangement testing. B, ROAS1 gene testing. C, tyrosine kinase inhibitors efficacy. D, pdl one expression levels, 5. For a lung adenocarcinoma measuring 1.5 centimeters with visceral pleura involvement and negative lymph nodes, the appropriate TNM stage would be A, T1BN0, B, T2AN0, C, T1AN0, D, T2BN0. These questions are more focused on the pathology aspects of lung adenocarcinoma, suitable for pathology residents' knowledge and understanding. Let me know if you need further adjustments or additional questions. Question number four doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, could you redo that one? Certainly, I'll revise question four to make it more relevant and clear. Four, considering the detection of an EGFR L858R mutation in lung adenocarcinoma, what is the most likely clinical implication for targeted therapy? A, increased efficacy of standard chemotherapy, B, indication for treatment with tyrosine kinase inhibitors, C, no impact on treatment choice, D, suggests a poor response to immunotherapy. This question now focuses on the clinical implications of detecting the EGFR L858R mutation, particularly in the context of targeted therapy. Let me know if you need more modifications or additional questions. I think that question, uh, the B is actually the correct answer, but um, isn't there some data around that um, patients with EGFR mutations actually have a poor response to immunotherapy and um, actually are at high risks of, um, of, of pneumotoxicity uh, with them? You're correct. Patients with EGFR mutations, such as the L58R mutation, often have a poor response to immunotherapy and are at an increased risk of pneumonitis, a potentially serious lung toxicity. This is particularly relevant in the context of PD-1, PD-L1 inhibitors. So considering this information, the revised question would be four, in lung adenocarcinoma patients with an EGFR L858R mutation, what is a notable concern when considering immunotherapy? A, enhanced efficacy of immunotherapy. B, indication for concurrent chemotherapy. C, higher risk of pneumonitis and poor response. D, increased likelihood of complete remission. This revised question addresses the specific concerns related to immunotherapy in lung adenocarcinoma patients with EGFR mutations, making it more relevant and informative for pathology residents. Yeah, it's still not a great question. Let's not include that. But uh, everything else has been great. So thank you so much and hope you have a great day. You're welcome. And I'm glad I could assist you. If you have more questions in the future or need further assistance, feel free to reach out. Have a great day and good luck with your teaching session and the tumor board meeting.